voices and sing that. Say hallelujah. Get all the glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, all over the building, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. his sovereignty. Come on, lift it all over the house. Raise it, raise it, raise it. Lift your sound as we shift this atmosphere. Come on. Lift your sound. Hallelujah. 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 We know who we are. We know who we are. We know who our God is. We know who our God is. Put it in the atmosphere. 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 Hey! Declare that this place is the place that God dwells. Come on. That's it. Declare who he is in the atmosphere. Declare who he is in the atmosphere. Sovereign one, majestic one, King eternal, the Lord most high, the Lord most high. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Alpha and Omega, beginning at the end. Hallelujah, that's it. Get our kids to participate. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship your name. 
Glory to the Lamb. 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 Hallelujah. 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 We bless his name. We thank you, God. We bless his name. Thank you, Lord. 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 That's it. That's it. That's it. Until it breaks. Until it breaks. Until it breaks. Oh, God. Oh, God. Come on, intercessors, put it in the air. Come on, prayer warriors, put it in the air. Hallelujah. 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 Here you go. So yada la bada. So yada. One time, clap your hands real good in here. I mean, clap, 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 clap. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love it. 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 I like a little resistance. Flex your muscle in the spirit realm. Hey! Glory to God. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to his name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. May be seated. May be seated. May be seated. Let our, uh, uh, let our kids stay here this week. Let our kids stay here this week. I, I want to share some apostolic and pastoral observations. I want our kids to hear it. Hallelujah. I know some, uh, I want a little church to say, I want to push it past you. Yeah, where you at? Um, uh, so I just had to preach it through. Uh, clap your hats with Jesus in here. He teaches my hands to war. Clap your hands, oh you people. Shout with a voice of triumph. I said, clap your hands, oh you people. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Bless his name. That's it. That's it.
tell you. In previous seasons, uh, when things get a little awkward in the atmosphere, we would strive hard and you know, start rebuking everything. But a little resistance lets me know we're on the right track. I said a little resistance lets me know we're on the right track. I said a little resistance. I said a little bit. I ain't say a lot. I said a little bit. I said a little bit. Look at your neighbor and say just a little bit. We've been in. Uh, the pastors and I have been uh, in all kind of conferences since Thursday, traveling up and down. Still got to travel back and forth to Atlanta today. Uh, I wanted to come in, trace it, and have some good church. Um, and then t this morning got a little awkward. Um, when your expectation is, God, you're going to move. And then you reach a place where it seems like it's like a little, somebody says just a little resistance. Um, Let's me know we on the right track. Uh, uh, most times we would be defensive or reactive. I want this morning us to take the attack to the enemy. This is God's house. I said, this is the Lord's house. I felt something. I said, this is the Lord's house. And we are the Lord's people. This is the Lord's house. And we are his inheritance. We are God's people. And wherever God's house is and his people is, he promised to be in the midst. So every witch, every warlock, every opposing spirit, every confusing spirit must bow. And at the name of Jesus, hey, and at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. And every tongue must confess that he is Lord. Why do we confess that he is Lord? Because we read the end of the book. And at the end of the book, he prevails over all the nations. I said, he prevails over all the nations. The horse and the rider should be dumped into. I said, he, pre he prevails. How many know you serve a prevailing God? I said, we serve a prevailing God. Whose side are you on? I'm on the winning side. Whose side are you on? I'm on the prevailing side. Whose side are you I'm on the victorious side. So I like a little resistance. It lets me know we're on the right track. It also shows us yee, yee, something is happening on our behalf. Hallelujah. Take your seats. Let's learn a little bit. But if you feel a praise, just break out in it. Just break out in it. Don't do that. I'll I, I dance. I thank God we're growing. I thank God we're moving. I thank God we're excelling. I thank God we're stronger than we used to be. I'm grateful to God. I said we're stronger than we used to be. I said we're stronger than we used to be. I said we're better than we used to be. Don't let the outside fool you. I heard from heaven, we're better than we used to be. I said don't let earth fool you. I got a message from heaven. You are a whole lot better. You look at somebody around the room and say you are a whole lot better. You are a whole lot better. Don't you go by what you see. Don't you go by what you see. I heard from heaven. I said, I heard from heaven say we're a whole lot better. We're a whole lot better. We're a whole lot better. Don't let the numbers fool you. We're a whole lot bigger. If you open your eyes, there's more for you than there is against you. That's a run. I said, there's more for you than there is against you. There's more for you than it is against you. Let them say what they want to say. 1,000 may fall on his left hand and 10,000 on his right. Why? Because he is our God and he is our Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So shake yourself. Shake yourself. Shake yourself. Shake yourself. Shake yourself. Hallelujah. Put our scripture on the screen, Jude 1, verse 4, quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for our praise team, our intercessors, our musicians, to, uh, 
our media team, our elders, deacons, even our children. Matter of fact, I even thank God for whatever spirit tried to hinder. I thank God for it all. I thank God for it all. I thank God for it all. I wouldn't know he was a healer unless I seen sickness. I wouldn't know he was a deliverer unless I ever seen bondage. I wouldn't know he was a provider unless there was lack. I wouldn't know he was powerful unless I needed him to stand up strong. I would never know he was God unless I had some devil-like situations. I would never know he was a lifter unless I've been in a low place. I would have never know who he was unless he showed up on my behalf. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. We are at our best. <laughs> I said we are at our best when it seems like we're at our lowest place. I said we are at our best when it seems like we're at our lowest place. How can I back it up scripturally? Paul prayed and said, when you remove this, three, he prayed three times, remove it, remove it, remove it. And God said, nope, my grace is sufficient. And watch the second part. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. And never know what God says, I can't be strong as long as you're strong. But whenever we feel like we're in a low place, God says, let me show up on your behalf. Let me show that I'm the El Elyon. Let me show that I'm the most high. Let me show that I'm the most powerful one. Let me show that I'm the provider. Let me show up and show that I'm God. I'm eternal. Everlasting to everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting. I'm Alpha and Omega. Beginning at the end. I'm the first and the last. I am that I am. And I will be what I will be. Whatever you need. I said whatever you need. Matter of fact, lift your hand and say, God be you. Just be you. Be you in this atmosphere. Be you on this day. Be you and whatever you want to be. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody shout hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. I say say it. I said shout it. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We ain't never scared. We ain't never scared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to teach you how to make it through Tuesday. <laughs> I said I'm trying to teach you how to make it through Tuesday. Monday may feel one way and it'll flip on Tuesday. But when you know you got victory on the inside, let it all come. Let it all come. I still got to, I shall live to Wednesday. I shall, somebody shall, I shall live. I shall live and declare. Dead folks can't declare nothing, but I need somebody living in here. I said, and declare the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm alive. To say something. <laughs> I said, I'm alive to say something. What you gonna say? He's a deliverer. What you gonna say? He's a provider. What you gonna say? He shows up for his people. What you gonna say? I'm more than a conqueror. What you gonna say? I've seen him do it before and he'll do it again. What you gonna say? That God is great and greatly to be praised. I said, God is great and greatly to be praised. Uh oh. I said, God is great and greatly to be praised. Let hell and high water come. God is still great. Let the world come. Let God is still great. The grass may wither and everything may fade. But we, but. Hallelujah. Woo. Feels like victory in here. I said, feels like victory in here. Feels like victory in here. We have an assignment. We have an assignment. We have an assignment that every time we come together, something ought to happen in the air. We have an assignment that every time we come together, some prison door ought to fly open. Every time we come together, somebody ought to be loose. Every time we come together, there ought to be a proceeding word from heaven. Every time we come together, there ought to be victory somewhere. Every time we come together, something ought to change. Every time we come together, I expect signs, wonders, and miracles. Every time. Every time. Clap your hands.
hands in here. I want the babies to stand. I want the babies to stand. Somebody say Operation Next. The musicians are on. Uh, they making it through, doing what they can. Keep my kick going. You're going to have to be real aggressive. So you're going to have to be like an MD today. You can't stop when they stop. You got to, because they still trying to work it through. So that means you got to be aggressive. Operation Next. Somebody shout Operation Next. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I grew up in a church where kids were doing a lot because that's what they were trained to do so they would be able to step up. Y'all make sense of what I'm saying? I preached my tr first trial sermon at the age of 14. Uh, I'm talking about standing behind the pulpit, everybody come, you know, trial sermon. Because somebody believed enough to, you know, I accept my call, all that. Operation next. I heard the Holy Ghost say, hear me, I heard the Holy Ghost say that we now need to start shifting to where we're preparing for next and preparing for tomorrow. Most times we have been reactionary, so if a musician didn't show up, we were stuck. But now if we raise up our own, we'll never be without. Y'all ain't nothing I'm trying to tell you, y'all. When folk get twisted with us and say they not come back to church, guess what they do? They stop coming, then we got to find somebody else. But I heard the Lord say, raise up in your own house. Y'all miss what I'm trying to tell you. So, Lathan, I want you to go behind Maurice. Move quickly. Rye, I want you to find Brittany. I want a few more, y'all. Those just have what I identify. Come on, Boston. You coming over here, too. Boston, come here. Stand right here. Boston, stand right here. Bring me some oil fast. I mean fast in a hurry. Hold this. Lift your hands, young man. You ain't even gonna understand it. But I promise over your hand. Lift both, keep your both hands. You lift it, man. Work with me. If you did it for David, did it for David, that whatever instrument you touch, you'll be masterful at it. I excel you into purpose. I excel you into purpose. In Jesus' name. Lord, cause a mantle of excellence. A mantle of excellence that every instrument he picks up. Oh, oh so about it. Jesus' name. Let him go on up there. Be beside Mario. Everybody's standing. person in this room quickly find somebody that you feel led to Kaden go to your granddaddy real fast I mean run don't be slow that ain't running Shaniqua I need you to grab grab Jamie for me wife I need you in the room I don't need you I need you in the room that's a preacher. That's a preacher. 
preacher there. He used to stir up stuff, but that's a preacher there. And that's a prophet. I want the older to now start praying on top of the younger. Pray on them. 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 I want the younger to start praying for the older. I want the young men to start praying for the older men. Go ahead, pray for them. Tell them what I'm saying. I want the younger people to start praying for the older men. Somebody heard me prophetically. I said, This is children's church. You may be seated. entire time. If we can give a grace to adults to mess up and get their stuff together, we can spend that same amount of time pouring to our young people. I can't hit nobody up in here. We're going 
going to have to stay with it. Right while you go back over there. I need you groomed. I need you groomed for greatness. I need you groomed for greatness. I need you groomed for greatness. Is it Bryson? That's his name, Bryson. I get him to say Bryce, Bryson. You call him Bryce for short, right? It's Bryson. Come here, Bryson. I saw that young man praying for Deontay, and, and he had words in his mouth. Come here, young man. Lift your hands, young man. Prophesy. Pray. Be a family changer. A generational changer. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare you change things in your generation. I declare you change things in your family. Even the circumstances from which you came. What the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. You had an appointed time to be in the earth. To fulfill a certain assignment. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You had an appointed time to be in the earth. For such a time as this. 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 And we speak over your today. We speak over your tomorrow. In Jesus' name. Jeremy, I honor. Sit beside me, Pastor Jerry. I said what the devil meant for evil. I know the backstory, you don't. And I ain't gonna give you all the details. But what shouldn't have happened, happened. And he's here. And the fact that he's here is because when God has a plan, it supersedes even your line. I wish somebody with generational curses in your line would say it supersedes, I mean it trumps. I don't care what your father, I don't care who your daddy, your mama, I don't even care who your grandma, when God has a plan, it supersedes the line. Pull your notes out. Gotta get out of here. I don't want to push the point, but I need about five of y'all to grab that. I don't care who your daddy, I don't care what they did, I don't care how you got here. When God got a plan, it don't matter how you got here, the fact you still here means that God got a plan. Listen to me, say, God got a plan for me. God got a plan for me. God got a plan for me. I ain't got to understand it. I've been through hell and they know why I live because God got a plan. God got a plan. When God's got a plan, you were born for this. Who is that for? You were born for this. Don't try to put your purpose on nobody else. You were born for this. Can't nobody copy it. Can't nobody duplicate it. You were born for this. Mm-hmm.
Then just take about a 60 second praise break this. Tap your hands, open your mouth. Do something in the month of praise break. We just gonna break and take praise. Uh oh! time I'm done, if we get there, I feel like running all around the block, when I tell you, I feel like running all around the block. certain men have crept in unnoticed. Watch, y'all got something lingering on us, a high note. For certain men have crept in unnoticed. For certain men have crept in unnoticed. For certain men have crept in unnoticed. They snuck in and nobody notices they snuck in. But in this season, I want all my watchful discerners just to make some noise for me real fast. unnoticed, here's what gets good, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. In other words, what they're doing in real time was already marked out that they would do it, so God had already set things up for them to do what they're going to do, but God's already got a plan for your enemies. I wish somebody would grab the fact that God says, I already got a plan for your enemies. God will let your enemies touch you to get you to pray, and then rebuke your enemies for touching you in the first place. I need somebody to grab what I just told you. I said, God will allow your enemies to get your attention to get you to pray. And then beat your enemies down for touching you in the first place. All my special kids make some noise in here. Ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord. He is the only Lord. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. I'm going to say it again for all my apostolic folk. One Lord, one faith. One, he is one Lord. Somebody shout one. And our Lord Jesus Christ. He's got a name. And our Lord Jesus Christ. My topic today, uh, for a little short while, is going to be you bugging. All my old school folk. I used to listen to old hip hop, you know, 
things, a little slang, you bug me. In other words, uh, if I was to work this out, I would ask you to, you know, uh, just look at your neighbor and tell them you bugging. Look at somebody with a real, you know, like little street thing. I like your kicks. And just say you bugging. No, y'all, come on. Now, y'all, you know, y'all, just, yeah, just, just cold switch with me. You bugging. Uh, if, if I, if, if I told you, who told you you were broke? You bugging. Who told you you were gonna be single all your life? You, you bugging. Who told you, you know, you weren't cute? You bugging. Who told you you want all that? You you bugging. You bugging. In other words, you got some misinformation. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I, I said I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I need all my single folk just make some noise and grab that word. You bugging. You you bugging. You bugging. You bugging. You bugging. You bugging. All my successful people make some noise. You you bugging. You, who told you it wasn't going to work? You bugging. Who told you you couldn't be great? You bugging. Who told you it wasn't going to work out for you? You bugging. Who told you that God was going to let you fail? You bugging. Who told you God wasn't going to come? You bugging. Somebody shout, you bugging. You bugging. You bugging. Period. With a T at the end. And a period. Get all your. Uh, Aaron, do you have my little picture up there? All right, you, got, you ain't got my song. Um, you ain't got to go back. I know you're working so hard. Just stay right there. Um, uh, Deborah Cox had a song that I had on YouTube. And around a minute, 36 seconds, she starts singing this chorus. How did you get here? Nobody. Nobody's supposed to be here. All right, now I'm, I'm going to stop there. I, I, I just want to see it right. <laughs> All right, right. y'all about to go to the club. We just came out of glory. Like, hey! Ooh, 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 yeah! All right. Y'all know I code switch. You ain't allowed to spin. Uh-huh. And if you saw one of them things in your house, after you scream, you'll be singing the same thing. How did you? All right. Uh, these are called palmetto bugs, uh, water bugs. How many have ever seen them in your house? Uh, uh-huh. The first time I seen one, we were staying at uh, 6941 Winstone Lane in Stone, Stone Mountain, Georgia. I was minding my business. I've never seen one of these things. Now, I've been in the hood, but never lived in the hood, thank God. And so um, this thing, I just thought was a big creature. And I went to go step on it, and the thing flew. And I hollered like a girl. Because <laughs> most times, y'all know roaches, cockroaches, don't, they don't fly. What manner of evil is this? Yeah. Somebody wave your hands. Remember, remember, you remember your first time? Uh -huh. And then, so, you know, now there's a difference between a cockroach, that means you're nasty, and a palmetto, that means you just live in the woods. Y'all not going to roll with me. Uh -huh. If you get one of these things in your house, now, my wife sprays rain on everything. You can have a plate full of food, and if she see a fly, that means your whole, I, I said I was going to treat her better. My wife is a wonderful person. Clap your hands for my wife. She's so beautiful. I love her. I do love her. I love her. I love her. I love my wife. She's so wonderful. She's so wonderful. I said I was going to be a better husband in 2022. I'm just going to start a little early. All right. All right. I, I did, you know, I had to, I got to be honest with me, you know, because I can be a little trifling, so I'm trying to be better. And thank you, thank you, Jerry, I'm, I'm being better. See, I just cut my whole little testimony off. Anyway, I'm going to talk about the raid in my state. Anyway, so, uh, I, when, if you have one of these, somehow they sneak in. And the crazy thing is, you got all the doors closed, so how did it get in? Anybody ever ask, like, how'd you get in here? And then you start going around the house trying to find every crack, every crevice, right, trying to make up. And you just never know how this bug gets in. It crept in unawares. And now you're spending the rest of, until you kill it. Now, the good thing about these things, they slow until they fly. Now, if they fly, you got a problem, because that means they, you know, they, but then you're looking for the next one. Just maybe, just maybe, just maybe. As I use this illustration, you can take it down. Some people get freaked out. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. As I use this illustration, it crept in. It crept in. It crept in. 
it crept in. It crept in. Let me give you a better example of a bug that slipped in. I learned something. Um, the iPhone 13 is out. Nope. Because they want me to pay off my lift. <laughs> and they got some gimmick. They say, oh, we'll pay your phone off. And then, no, y'all, y'all, no, they, they, they be lying. They, they be lying. Y'all notice ever so often, all y'all androids, y'all can't relate, but ever so often, ever so often, ever so often, they will send you a thing called an update. Somebody holler at your boy, roll with me. What are you updating? Here's the crazy thing. When I first bought the phone, the phone was fine. That mother was like, choom, 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 choom. Like pulling up stuff quick, didn't have no issues. But then the longer you have it, they send you an update. Here's what I find out the hustle is with the update. The update is really not an update. It's just an in bed to slow you down so by the time the next one come in, it will provoke you to go do an upgrade which keeps you locked in a contract. Y'all miss what I'm trying to tell y'all. If I had never got the first update, then I probably could have kept my phone look. Y'all miss what I'm trying to tell you. The reason, here's what I, when I studied this a little bit, come to find out that most of us keep our phones even when they come out with a new model because we figure our phone is Fine. Ain't nothing wrong with the phone. Even the, I know the 13 is all dope. It's got the little movie thing. I don't shoot movies, so I don't need that. It's going to do the same thing I'm doing now. Y'all, look, don't look at me in that tone of voice. If I can text, cool. If I can check my emails, cool. If I can get on the gram, cool. It's going to do the same thing. Ooh, the camera is just, ooh, it's just all that. And once you get done with that camera, realize you're still paying a whole lot more money for the same phone you just had a year ago. I can't hear nobody up in here. You are changing my current situation because you want to, in the future, get me messed up. I got to get somebody to say it again. I said, you're trying to embed something in my current situation because you're setting me up for the long haul. Then when you want me to now upgrade and stay in bondage, I mean, stay in the, con I mean, stay in the contract, you can keep me there because I had to upgrade because you showed me something all shine. If I anybody understand what I'm saying, it crept in on the wells. And then all of a sudden, sometimes the phone acts a little buggy. Y'all know how it is. Can't call out. Or you do call out, they call somebody else. Somehow they'll have a little glitch sometimes. Like, what is that? Got to shut it off to get it to serve back. Y'all, am I the only one? Somebody made me feel like I'm not the only one with a little piece of technology. Uh -huh. I'm trying to get somewhere real quick, but just, I got to go the, the long way. It crept in on the wares. And when I thought about the cell phone, I started thinking about our lives. It crept in on a wells. And watch this. The long game, somebody say the long game. It's not just to get you to stop coming to church. It's to get you to lead the faith. Y'all miss what I try to tell you. The long game is to get you to lead the faith. Deliverance be your portion. The long game is to get you to leave the faith. I know for God I live, huh? and for God I die. But what if, what if God wanted to put your name before the divine council? It says the sons of God came before God, presented themselves, and Satan was with them. I wish I had time to work this. And he said, have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant Danella? Have you considered my servant Victor? Have you considered my servant? Anybody feel like your name has been on somebody in somebody's mouth and like, I didn't ask for this. Come on, somebody. I didn't ask to be on nobody's list. Leave me alone. Anybody ever feel like that? They who? Like, what? Why are you bothering me? I pay my taxes. I go to work. I don't bother nobody. I, I try to treat, I try to treat everybody, right? But your name is on some list and it crept in unawares. Now I gotta work a little bit because I gotta, I gotta walk slow. I got to walk slow, but I got to walk quickly because, you know, it's Sunday. Y'all ain't trying to fool me too long. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And it's, and, it's launch, and it's launch Sunday. Uh, we launching our new app. Come on, make some noise in here. Now, Aaron, you're going to get mad with me because I didn't give you all these scriptures, but I need you to type in real fast like you're real smart. I'll celebrate you later. You know the hot dog. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8. Put these scriptures down. And your notes real fast. 
you don't need to keep up with these. I'm going to expose some things, be a little deep. I'm going to come, I'm going to go deep, and then I'm going to come back up to the top, and then I'm going to leave y'all. Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. Where I tell y'all to turn? Uh-huh, that's my first scripture. You can be fired, but still in place. You can be fired and still in place. Fired and still in place means you're working, but you're not going to get no check. That up, I need somebody. I said, you can be fired and still in place. Old folks say, get your time in. Payday is coming after a while. But what happens when the payday ain't the payday you thought the payday was going to be? When the Most High divided the inheritance to the nations, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set boundaries of the people. Can you find the ESV for me? Uh, according to the number of, this says the children of Israel. It's not the children of Israel. It's the sons of God. Stay with me. The sons of God. Sons of God. So watch this. It means, somebody say sons of God. So I want you to name, come on, name some nations that are out there. Go ahead. All my people that, all, especially y'all kids that be in the social studies, name some nations. Go. Countries. Come on. Act like y'all been in school. So I'm sick of y'all. Act like you've been in some education. Uh-huh. Come on. Uh-huh. Y'all only know the big ones. Come on. Tanzania. Come on. Give me some art. Uh-huh. Just call it out loud. Uh-huh. This says, when the Most High gave to the nations, stay with me, all my smart people, gave to the nations their inheritance when he divided mankind. He fixed the borders of the peoples according to the numbers of the sons of God. I got to work this so you understand, so you won't think I'm just blowing a bunch of smoke. Every nation that is on earth, every nation that's on earth was divided by God. And then a principality was put over it to govern over that nation. So all the nations, their borders were set. This is good to me. Was set based upon the number of the sons of God. These are not the sons of God that you may think. These are some, uh, let's say, some uh, creatures or some beings. They are sons of God. They are angelic beings, but they have a little rank. Watch this. And they have rank to rule over what of a region they are over. That means every place where there is a nation, there is a realm, there is a ruler over that nation. And that means America's got a ruler. Canada's got a ruler. England's got a ruler. Egypt's got a ruler. Nigeria's got every nation. There is a ruler over it. This is a, as Moses is sharing with the children, uh, the children of Israel before they go into the promised land, this took place after, watch this, how many remember the Tower of Babel? I got to go a little deep, got to teach y'all. Raise your hand if you remember the Tower of Babel. It says they were all gathered in one place and were all one language. Am I making sense to y'all? When they were all in one language, matter of fact, uh, Dale, you can go ahead and take the children because I, I think y'all going to have a, take the younger ones out. Leave me the older ones. Yeah, let them. Let them be excused uh -huh, so they don't tell, tell you know, they want some snacks and stuff like that. And I'm not giving no snacks in the sanctuary. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, when the Tower of Babel, look this way, when the Tower of Babel took place and they were all, it says, and they were all scattered. Somebody say scattered. scattered. Somebody say scattered. scattered. Say scattered again as our children transition. Scattered. In other words, God says, I'm going to scatter y'all because y'all trying to build your own fame. Watch this church. You are trying to build your own fame. So I got to scatter y'all because you're not doing it for my glory, but you're doing it for your fame. And whenever we stay in one place, when God told us to go spread out and to spread this gospel, but we stay in one place and want to just build our name, God says, eventually I will scatter you. And when he scatters them, he scatters them across the earth. He scatters them all across the earth and then puts a ruler because he says, you don't really want me to be your God, so I'm going to let you have a lower God that's going to rule over you and not treat you like the way I would treat you. You bugging. You bugging. Go to Psalm 82. Psalm 82. Psalm 82. 
I got to go somewhere. I just got to walk a little slow. I said I wasn't going to teach deep, but I'm going to do it. Psalm 82. Where I tell y'all to turn? So the first scripture I gave y'all was what? All right. The second scripture I gave y'all is what? Psalm 82. Looking at verse 1. A psalm of Ahab. God stands in the congregation of the what? Of the mighty. He judges among the what? The gods. The lowercase g. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Say la. That means pause. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. Keep reading. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in, and what? Part of our problem is the fact that we just don't know any better because we haven't been taught any better. But there's more to us than what you see. And my people perish for lack of? Uh, the true show of uh, demonic activity is darkness, wickedness, darkness. So how can the enemy get you in this season if he just keeps you in the dark? But I need somebody to flip the light on. Uh, they walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are what? Unstable. I said you are what? Gods. And all of you are children of the what? Most high. Or translated, the sons of God. Mm -hmm. But you shall die like men. So you are sons of God who are in my counsel, but you're going to die like a man. You are God, a spiritual being, a celestial being, but you're going to die like a man. Why would he say that? Because you have not judged the nations that I put you over well, so now I have to hold you accountable. I got to walk slow. I'm going slow. So these sons of God, these sons of God, these, and these, these celestial beings that are part of his divine counsel, these same ones we saw in Deuteronomy 32 and 8, God now fires them. And watch this, give, gives the nerve for somebody to overhear the conversation. You cannot be in, how many have ever been in a board meeting where they're making major decisions about a corporation? How many have ever been in a, a business meeting where they're making big decisions? Oh, watch this, you can't hear that stuff unless you have certain authorization. So the rulers of the nations were having, were coming for God, and God says to them, because you have not ruled well or judged well, but I knew you were going to do it, you're going to die like a man. In other words, you fired, but I'm going to leave you in place. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God. Arise, O God. Arise, O God. Arise, O God. Judge the earth. For you shall inherit what? You shall do what? All nations. Deuteronomy 32 and 8 says that he scattered all the nations and put those gods, these sons of gods, over it. But then the next verse is going to say, but he kept, watch this, he kept Israel as his inheritance. God, help me teach it in here. Can you go to the next verse for me? Sons of God, according to the sons of God. Can you go to, is it possible? It's all right. The next verse is going to say, but he kept, but when, uh, good. Uh, when the Most High gave to the nation their inheritance, when he divided mankind, he fixed the borders. and the sons of God. But the Lord's portion, the Lord's portion is his people. The Lord's portion is his people. The Lord's portion is his people. Jacob has allotted heritage. In other words, God says, I'm going to let y'all little gods take all those other nations, but I'm going to keep this one nation for me. In other words, I'm going to let you do whatever you want to do with them, but I'm going to keep this one nation for me. And I'm going to prove how good I am to this one nation as they just follow me, just stick with me. And when they look, when you look at them, you'll be able to see, oh, it's better over there because they have a better God. Uh, but if they, if I can just get my people just to stay with me, why am I trying to say that to y'all, you buggy? Because you forget the fact that God says if you are his people, that means you're part of his inheritance. He's trying to show your enemies that he's treating you better. He's trying to show your enemies that you have a better life. You have a better opportunity because you got a better covenant. Is there anybody in the room glad that God says, I will show out for you just to show your enemies how good I am. God's going to use you and your life just so he can prove to your enemies that the God that you serve is greater than it. He's a king of kings and lord of lords. Alpha, in other words, he said, I'm going to be so good to you. They look and say, why is he so good to you? Because he's just a good God. I need somebody to grab a praise and thank God for being a good God in here. Hallelujah. So now, since you're part of his inheritance, let's keep going. Go to John chapter 1. 
John chapter 1, St. John, not I, John, St. John chapter 1, verse 12. St. John chapter 1, verse 12. Just write that scripture down. What did I tell y'all to turn? St. John chapter 1, verse 12. So we started in Jude 1, verse 4. We went to Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. We then went to, uh, what the next scripture we went to? Uh, Psalm 82. Come on, we rocking. Now we're going to John chapter 1, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. I want to hoop and holler, but I want to make sure you understand who you are. Because if you leave here and I don't hoop and holler, say, ooh, that was a good word, but you still are walking in darkness. Now, I have not done my job. I didn't make sure everybody in here, we get the bugs out. I can't hear nobody. We get the bugs out. Be to all, be to all who did receive him, who believed in his name. He gave the right to become the what? Sons of God. Can you put that in the KJV? It's going to read a little bit different. It's going to read a little bit different. Because I believed in him, because I received him, he now gives me the right or the power to be a part of the what? Sons of God. The sons of God. Now, those same sons of God were ruling the nations earlier, but now he said he's going to give me the right to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. As we go to the Beatitudes, I feel a little help in here. Matthew chapter 9, verse 5, verse 9. Shoot me later. I know I should have gave them to you earlier, but I'm a bad pastor. I'm going to do better by you next year. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the what? Peacemakers for they shall be called the what? So that means if you're part, if you believe in him, you're called the sons of God. But if you're a peacemaker, he's looking for those who can cause peace. That's why I said earlier, in the name of Jesus, let there be peace. I know you may feel like you got hell around you, but if you just lift your hand and say, let there be peace. Sometimes you got to stop the chaos. You got to stop the storm and say, let there be peace. The enemy is trying to stir up some stuff, but let there be peace. Peace got ears. I said your storm, somebody told me earlier, said your storm got ears. I said your storm got ears. There's the eye of the storm, but then there's the ear of the storm. Because when he says peace be still, something had to hear and respond. Because every knee must bow. I don't care if it's a storm. I don't care if it's a sea. Every knee must bow. And every time that he is low, it must bow. Hallelujah. Bless all the peacemakers. Bless all the peacemakers, for they shall be called the what? Sons of God. Hallelujah. Now go to 1 John. I, John, as old school say, I, John, chapter 3. I, John, chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, we started and first jo- we started in Jude talking about these things have crept in unawares. And now I'm trying to unveil to you the bugs that have been in our system. I then took you to Deuteronomy chapter 32 to show you what was in the air and the rams that were based upon the regions and the regions that were based upon the rams or who's ruling over the rams that are leading the regions. I then took you to Psalm 82 and showed you how they got fired because they weren't ruling well. Ah, and if they got fired, that means if you get fired, that means somebody's got to take your place. Come on, sons of God, y'all missing what I'm trying to tell y'all. Ah, 1 John chapter 3 verse 1 says, there was a man, no, no, I, I John, uh, uh, 1 John, 1 John, not, not St. John, I John, uh, 1 John, it's in the back of the book. Uh, yeah, 1 John chapter 3 verse, I know, should get me later, don't panic, everything is fine, I'm good, I love you so much, just keep giving me a thumbs up. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Felice Navidad. Here we go. Behold what manner of love. Oh, God, that's good news. Behold what manner of love. What manner of love. What manner of love. Some folks said they love you, but really didn't love you. They just using the word. But I said some folks thought they, they may say, you know, you ever had somebody say, oh, I love you, but you treat me bad. Uh, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the what? Y'all make me sick. You don't even deserve it, but God says, I'm going to call you that anyway. You don't even know who, what it really means, but I'm going to let you be that anyway. In other words, I'm going to let you have a job that you ain't even qualified to be in. Y'all make me mad. I said, have you ever felt like, how did I get in this position? I ain't got the degree. And all these other smart people, God says, but when I marked you, when I called you who you were not, when I called you, I spoke some things over you. All you can do is just walk it out. Walk it out. He loves us so. He puts us in places we don't even deserve to be. He loves us so. He looks beyond our faults and sees our needs. He lo- What matter of love is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, that we should be called. Call me crooked, but he calls me the sons of God. Call me black, but he calls me the son of God. 
You may call me trifling, but he calls me the son of God. Call me by what I used to do, but he called me by the son of God. You call that old scoundrel there, but he called out your glad that no matter what they say, as long as he's got a different testimony in his mouth, uh, let people say what they want to say. Sticks and stones uh, may break my bones. Uh, your words may hurt my feelings, but as long as he's got my soul, I'm all right. He says he called me the sons of God. I am more than what I thought it was, and I'm just trying to preach to y'all. Who am I preaching to right now? They get you to understand you got some bugs in your system that be telling you a lord and where you really supposed to be. You ain't broke. Your father's rich and housing land you ain't low your god is greater somebody give god praise right there right there right there uh, i need a church this out got to teach you yeah i know i'm gonna teach you two churchy chords this week and you're gonna play up next sunday here we go so now y'all clap your hands for man and maurice <laughs> operation next y'all see them on the organ looking you know and the keyboards just pray all our strength that i won't beat them up and you know push them past their limit and we still have good church. Thank God for the tracks. Therefore the world knoweth. Therefore the world. Y'all know me. Yes, get back to the word. Pray by script. Oh, God. Therefore the world knows us not. Oh, come off of Instagram. They don't know you like that. Come off Facebook. They don't know you like that. Where am I real folk at? People think they know based upon what you put on the gram. But you don't really know me like that. You may know my face, you may see me in the street, but you don't really know me like that. So keep a name out your mouth, because you don't really know me like that. Really, see you in the street, remember, you don't know me. All right, here we go, I'm keeping going. That's a little hood. Therefore the world knows us, y'all so carnal. Therefore the world knows us not, because they don't know your God. I can't deal with your identity unless I deal with your theology. If I don't get your theology right, then you'll be living mythology. Which eventually mess up your psychology and impact your sociology. I'm going to say that again. I can't deal with your identity because most folk are trying to be who they are. But if your theology is wrong, you'll be the wrong person. So if I can get your, you to understand. He says it, they didn't know you because they didn't know him. They don't know you because they didn't know him. They don't know you. Because they don't know him. Why will you and him got anything to do? Because in him. And if there be any man in Christ. In other words, my identity is not based upon me. But it's based upon who I'm in. <laughs> and as long as I'm in him. Oh, y'all missed it. So that way you don't get into mythology. Some made up stuff. <laughs> if I could just get these bugs out. God's going to help us in this season. If I just get these bugs out. We've been living mytholo mythological lives, stuff just made up by other folk, but that's not who we are. Hey, the way for the world knows us not because it knew him not. Beloved now, beloved now, are we the what? The what? Sons of God. Sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall. In other words, I only know what you're going to look like in your glorified body. I see you now, but I don't know what you're going to look like. But it don't really matter as long as I know you're going to make it. I can't hear nobody up in here. But we know not that when we shall appear, he shall appear. When he shall appear, we shall be what? When he shall appear, we shall be what? When he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Oh, God, help me teach this. In other words, when he shows back up here, he's not coming just to walk around and be waving at everybody, but he's coming to rule the nations. And when he's coming to rule the nations, if I'm in him, guess what I'm coming to do? Y'all didn't say it like you confident. I said, when he comes to rule the nations, guess what that's going to empower me to do? Rule the nations. Y'all don't believe me. Here we go. Go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Revelation, Revelation. Not revelations, revelation. Chapter 2, verse 26. You, you, you're rocking with me so well, Aaron. Thanks so much. I'm making you work like a Hebrew slave, but I'll be nice to you next week. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. And he or she that does what? 
he or she that does what? Why can't you quit? Because you got to overcome. Why can't you give up? Because you got to overcome. Why can't you stop now? Because you got to overcome. Why do you have to overcome? Because I need you to walk out who you really are. Oh, God. If you stop now, you miss what I got up, up ahead. Y'all understand what I'm saying? If you quit today, don't expect no good check tomorrow. What would it look like you getting ready to quit a job and you were just getting ready to get a promotion? What would it look like if you get ready to quit because of a boss you were getting ready to replace? Now, I need to step on the chair right there. Can I say it again? I said, what would it look like you getting ready to quit because of a boss you getting ready to replace? Oh, help us, the Holy Ghost. He that overcometh and keepeth my works. I need somebody to grab that. I feel I, somebody pulling on me. Don't quit yet because you're getting ready to replace the boss that's harassing you and make the money you say you need. You can't make more unless you do more sometimes. Can somebody grab that out there? Now play me some prophetic stuff. Lift your hands all over this place. You can't make downstream impact unless you get upstream. You can't make impact on the lower level employees unless you get high enough to make decisions on their behalf. Some of y'all have been scared to get elevated because of the responsibility, but God says, I'm trying to get you to fix some stuff from people that are lower than you, but I got to get you to accept the fact that I'm trying to elevate you where that's where you are. Why would God put leader on the inside of us? Why would God put ideas on the inside of us? Why would God, why would God put greater on the inside? Like the urge to do more, the urge to be greater, the urge to, to, to be over. Why? Because God says, I've anointed you for such a time as this. Lift your hands all over this place. I've anointed you for such a time as this. I need to replace some people I fired long ago. But I need to make sure you're right. The earth is groaning for the sons of God to arise. The earth is groaning for the sons of God. There is paces in there. Businesses and, and industries that are crying and that are yearning for the sons of God to arise. I gotta get the bugs out. You bugging because you don't realize what God is trying to do tomorrow. You bugging because of what happened yesterday. You bugging because of what you see today. God says, I ain't sudden, I got a plan. I just need you. Lift your hands and open your mouth and worship Him right there. Come on, lift it. Lift it. Lift it. Lift it. He that overcometh and keeps my works unto the end, to him I will give power over the nations. Power over the nations. Power over the nations. You are tripping about your small little community. God says, I'm trying to put you over nations. You are tripping over your family. God says, I'm trying to put you over nations. And if your family is a nation, if your community is a nation, if your job is a nation, so be it. Just be the sons of God that I've called you to be in this season. First Corinthians chapter 6. He that overcometh. Stop talking about you getting ready to quit. Overcome. Stop complaining about how rough it is. Overcome. Stop complaining about how challenging it is. Overcome. You'll never know how great of a giant you are unless you step on some stuff. Unless you conquer some stuff. Let God arise. Hey. Let God arise. Let God arise. First on the inside of me. Let God arise. The any of you having a matter against another, don't go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints. Why would you go to the unrighteous judge before you come to the righteous saints? Because you buggy. Do you not know that the saints shall do what? The saints shall do what? The saints shall do what? I 
can't say it no plainer. Come in, jo Joel. Come in. You stand here. You stand here. Let's walk through our lesson again. I'm done. God put rulers or sons of God over the nations. Somebody say amen. That means everything down here on earth is being run by something in another realm. Somebody say amen. God says what's ruling in those realms, I've already said you're fired. Because you haven't run, you haven't ruled well like I would want you to rule. Oh, God, help me in here. But who I'm going to replace them with is already down here. And I just need you to hold fast to your belief. But there's some stuff that's crept in that's trying to get you to leave the faith and leave the belief. That way you never replace. Oh, God, help us in here. So when we preach hold on and, and have faith, we're not just saying that just to make it through a trial. We're saying that so you step into your God-given identity. Because when God cracks this, when Christ comes and when he comes riding on the white horse, he's going to then place all these, you are fired, you are released. But watch this. Who he's going to put in place? Come here, uh, uh, Josiah. Come here, come here, come here. Come here quick, come here, Caden. Move quick you move at your own speed. You stand here. You stand here. Now we are the sons of God. And it does not appear what we shall be like. I said now we are the sons of God. And it does not appear what we shall be like. Who did I put in place? God help them now. I understand. Who did I put in place? I put children in place. Except you be like a little child. You cannot make it in the kingdom. Why? Because I need the humility of them. So when I put them in place, they'll be able to rule with a sense of humility because they realize I don't deserve to be here anyway. I don't even know how to do this anyway. But if you lead me, if you rule through me, you bugging. You bugging. You bugging. You bugging. You bugging our authority here. Oh my God. Our authority here is more than even we've tapped into. Our authority here is more than we even tapped into. Our authority here is even more than we've tapped into. I hope y'all hear me, movement. I got to keep saying it. Here's the prophet talking. Our authority down here is more, it's more than we've tapped into. Our authority down on this earth and this region is more than we've tapped into. Our authority here is more than we've tapped into. It shows up every once in a while, and you'll walk into certain power and authority, and then you'll cower back. It will show up again, and then you'll say, oh, and then you'll cower back. Why? Because there's some bug in your system that says as soon as you move forward, and then there's a little opposition, or I guess it's time to repent retreat in this season we will not retreat in this season we will not back up in this season we will stand in our god-given identity and declare the kingdom of heaven is at hand the kingdom of heaven is at hand why does it have to be in the kingdom because i'm backed by another government i'm backed by a greater government i'm back greater as he that's in me greater he that's for me than he that's in the world i am a part of the kingdom the kingdom is at hand the kingdom is at hand We've been getting it all confused. We ain't saved just to be saved. We're not having church just to have church. Y'all can keep that. We're here to change some stuff because we are rulers over nations. And if this be the land, if this be the territory, if this is where we assemble, every time we come together, something's got to change. Something's got to change up there. That something can change down here. I can't hear nobody up in here. When things change up there, things change down here. But it first got to start on the end. And when we are, if there be two or three, uh oh, if there be two or three gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst. And wherever he's in the midst, his kingdom be there his kingdom be there his kingdom be there his kingdom be there here's the sad part some folk are still gonna walk in darkness 
Here's the sad part. I can preach till I'm blue in the face. And some of us will still retreat back to who we used to be. I can preach all day long. But here's my job. My job is only to tell you. Your job is to receive it and walk in it. I, my, my job is to open the door to point as a teacher to speak prophetically. And as an apostolic leader to show you where we're going. It's your job to receive it, run with it, and walk with it. But if you're blinded in your eyes because of your own disbelief, woe to you. God said this is the season to stand up and be who you are. Woe to you. This is season to break past some old things. To break past and to overcome them because I'm calling you to a higher place. I'm calling you to a greater place of authority. I'm calling you to a greater place of re-rating. If you suffer with me, you'll rule with me. If you suffer with me, no cross, no crown. No cross, no crown. What do you need the crown for? Because when I put you in place, you got to be in the stand and authority. I put you there. Now we are seated in heavenly places. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. You bugging. 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 He scattered them at Babel because they stayed in one place and were trying to build their own fame. What's stopping you from going? What's stopping you from doing that Bible study? What's stopping you from reaching out to those loved ones? What's stopping you from walking out your apostolic call? What's stopping you? The only thing stopping you is you're building your ziggurat in the wrong place. Now we are the sons of God. And these little small things that are taken away from our true God-given identity are just bugs. They're palmetto bugs that just keep creeping in. And as soon as we kill one, we go and think everything's fine. Another one creep back in. Try to get us to update. I'm not saying no update because your phone started acting crazy. Don't say pastor told you don't update your phone. I'm saying, you know, just give y'all, just, you know, just give y'all receding word. This is the season where I really feel like we're mature enough to start doing some greater things. We're mature enough to just start doing some greater things. Aren't you glad that God said you're mature enough to do some greater things? Clap your hands all over this place and give God praise. Happy birthday. Lord bless you. Ask my pastors to come to the front. If anyone would like to have prayer, if anyone who needs prayer in this moment, whatever the need is, whether it be salvation, whether it be deliverance, if you just need somebody to touch and agree with you, you got some situations going on, come to the front, come down. We want to be able to pray with you. I don't care what the situation is. Sometimes it's good to have someone that can touch and agree and pray with you where you are. No matter where it is, pray. We got prayer warriors here. All right. Pastors are here. Whatever your prayer request is. That's it. Death could not hold Check with your neighbor. Make sure I say there is anything that you need prayer with. Even if you want to pray with, just check with your neighbor. Make sure everything's well. Ask him, your soul all right? Your soul all right? Your spirit? You are. Death could not hold. seated as we prepare to give.
Hallelujah. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Father. Lord, thank you for meeting us here. Thank you for your word. Thank you for opening up your idea to us, for being plain, teaching us who we really are in you. We thank you, God. Cause this word to be sealed in our lives. Thank you for what you're doing even in our kingdom authority, raising us up, building us up. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to give. Uh, before we give, I want to uh, just teach shortly. Um, Clap your hands all over this place. Wonderful. Uh, for the next few weeks, I have about 17 reasons why we give. Uh, 17 reasons why, why we give. Uh, I have to start going back to teaching on giving uh, because I think some of us are not trusting God like we should. Uh, we trust Chipotle. We trust Chick-fil-A. We trust Taco Bell. We trust Amazon. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Uh, we trust uh, AT&T, and we trust Verizon. And here's how much we trust them. If they don't do well, guess what we do? We call them and either go back in the line and say, you didn't get my order right, or we say, my server's not right. But we demand that they fix it. And guess what our justification is for if we say, we want you to fix it? We say what? I paid for this. When it comes to the house of God, though, we receive services and goods, but some of us are not trusting God enough to pay for it or to sow back into it or to give back to it. So it's not that you're a stingy person. It's just sometimes you can be stingy in church. For others of us, it's just that I don't see how to do it. Have you ever had a season where you just don't see how to do it? Like, I know what I should do. I just, somebody tell the truth. I just don't see how, I don't see how I can do it. I want to challenge all of us that we give God from the first. In other words, instead of letting it be the leftovers, God let it be the first. Trust in God. The scripture says we should give cheerfully, which is 2 Corinthians chapter 9. So that's one reason we should give. We should give cheerfully. Why should we give God cheerfully? Because he gives to us cheerfully. Each of us should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but God loves, God loves, God loves a cheerful giver. Have you ever seen somebody give you something and they were grudging and giving it? What's the first thing you want to say? You shouldn't have gave it in the first place. You might want well to keep that because it wasn't give, given in the right spirit. Um, have you ever, uh, one second, because I want to go happy. Uh, have you ever uh, have you ever had a, a, a server or waiter that was having a bad day and they tried to take it out on you? And, you know, you just, you know, how you doing? Fine. Come on, sit right here. And then, you know, they bring your food and say, this is what you ordered. Like, you might well keep that because they didn't give it in the right what? How many are grateful that God has kept you and been and good to you and blessed you and saved you? How, how many? I just, just say somebody say something. Good. So when we're giving, I want you to I want you to think about what you're gonna give today. We could do the find me some happy music and just uh, we we could do the uh, and other times we have. There's nothing wrong with it as long as it's done with the right right spirit, right attitude. Uh, where I, if I say I need it, I need everybody in the room to give me fifty dollars. If I said that, and I, I might say that. Uh, would could you be able to do it? Some of us in certain seasons where fifty dollars ain't nothing. Others are in season. $50 is what you need for the next two weeks to get you to the next check. I can't hear nobody up in here. Uh, Lord help, Lord bless. Uh, their stuff, uh, I, I was, uh, <laughs> uh, I have a, a spirit that comes upon me every once in a while. It's called shopping. I'm not studying. I'm going to look away from somebody else. And uh, I was looking on this one. Is, these uh, guys has got an Instagram thing, and he got all these sneakers. And I'm like, oh, God. I like that one, that one, that one. I seen yours on there, but I ain't gonna, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna do it yet. Um, 
And uh, you know what I said to myself, Jerry? What can I do that I can have me some sneaker money? Now, mind you, the sneakers, I got enough shoes. Nobody, I got to stop looking at you. Uh, let me come over here. No, I did not look at you. No, you, you got the same spirit I got. I'm trying to figure out what can I do to get me some sneaker money. Now, it's not that I need the sneakers. It's just that I like the sneakers. And I like sneakers for every color, every style. I somebody holler back at me. Y'all start making me feel like I'm the only person. Nobody asked you. I work hard, and I like to enjoy, you know what I'm saying? I like what I like, and I know how to get it for a low price, amen. What if we all took that same kind of approach when it comes down to our giving? I want it. What do I want to do? I want to make sure the house of the Lord is taken care of. I want to make sure there's no need, because I need the house of the Lord. If we close church today, and God, well, I know we ain't closing. If we chose... It, I know it would impact us because we're being blessed. We're in a place we're getting the word, being taught. Some of y'all would have never read through the New Testament. Some of y'all would have never even, matter of fact, some of y'all wouldn't even be in a good spiritual place you is now. Y'all quiet up in here. Amen. So now, as we prepare to give, what can I give? What can I sow? Uh, there's my tithes, tithes off the gross. This belongs to God. There's my offering. All right? Good sound. Good. So I want you to prepare that, what you're going to sow and give. I want you to stand, uh, stand on your feet. And then I'm, uh, we're going to go into our announcements. When you have that seed that you're going to sow, uh, you know, that's uh, cash app, whatever, it is, whatever, it is, whatever, it is, whatever you have to sow, you're giving me a cash check, uh, you're going to bring it for the Lord. If you're giving me a cash app. Amen. Sowing. Sowing, giving our offerings unto the Lord. Uh, because, and we're doing it cheerfully. Why? Because he gives to us. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. So good giving. The church, all right. No, the church got a need. We, we, we've been behind for, for months. And we're going to sow our way out of it. Amen? I said we're going to sow our way out of it. We're going to sow our way out of it. I've seen God before. I've seen God before. And if he's done it before, he can do it again. Hallelujah. 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 That's also what I need help with. Hit me one time. Every week, what is this? No, is this November yet? Jesus. It's going to be Christmas. You want Thanksgiving first? Oh, well, I do need some turkey. I need some fried turkey. I, I want to do this every Sunday in November. I want to line all our kids up here, and I want to give each one a dollar or five dollars. Can y'all help me do it? I want to line each one of our kids. Now, I don't have any cash on me uh, right now, but let me tell you why I want to do it. I want to teach them how to handle money. And I want to prophesy into their lives that they'll never be broke a day in their life. Come on, bring your, bring, your, bring your offering up. Get on my level. I like it. So, the, nice birthday shoes. I like those. That was my size. Every Sunday, he said, nope. Every Sunday in November, I want to line all our kids up here, and we're going to sow a dollar or five dollars in their life every week. Can y'all hear me do it? That's going to take a lot of ones and a lot of fives, but I think we can do it. Every week. Every week. They're going to be looking forward to going to church. Ooh, I'm going to get some money. You know, we're going to sow into the kids. Our, our lives. All right? Good. Stretch your hands this way. Father, thank you for everything that's been sown, everything has been given. God, you know the need of this house. And God, we've seen you provide in times past. And God, we know you're ushering us out of the season of lack. You're ushering us out of the season where things were in between. You're ushering us out of the season of struggle. Why? Because you promised you would, and we declare it so. That any opposition to our finances, any opposition to our breakthrough, any opposition financially, any opposition that we have, God, we know that you are able to knock that wall down in the name of Jesus. We speak resources and people sowing from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We declare it now even for your people, God, those that have needs that are in the house. 
those that have needs that are in the house. God, we declare that even in their lives that there'll be financial breakthrough and ability and provision in Jesus' name. That we will, no one will be lack. No one will have lack. No one will have lack. We will all be above and not beneath in Jesus' name. And we clap our hands and declare it so. Come on, make some noise in here. Hallelujah. Somebody help me shout happy birthday to Brittany Hemphill. Today's her birthday. She got her birthday due on. Come on, make some noise for her. Happy birthday. Josiah's birthday was this week. Clap your hands for her. Josiah. Good, 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 good. And I think that's, uh, and also, y'all help me celebrate Victor pass his test. Praise the Lord. They scream for you because you passed the test. You can't mess up on the next one. All right, call Shanika coming up. Clap your hands for Shanika, our marketing director. She takes us further. You may be seated in the God's presence. Good morning, movement. Did you guys enjoy service today? Yes, that was amazing. Thank you all for visiting with us online. We would love to connect with you all. So if it's your first time visiting with us, place your name in the chat and our guest services team will reach out to you all. In the month of November, come on y'all, clap, 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 clap. November the 7th, we are celebrating all of our pastor, Pastor Lathan Wood, Kelly Wood, Tracy Blue, and Moses Blue. You all can give monetary contributions. Just make sure that you note pastoral gifts when you're giving. We have resumed our 6 a.m. devotional, you guys. So Wednesday through Friday, we are still getting up and declaring the word of God. Can we clap for our pastor, you all? He is going to be speaking at the BU conference on October 22nd through the 23rd. You all can go ahead and get your tickets. We want to show up for our pastor. Can we do that? Can we show up for our pastor, please? All right, y'all, the best news of the day, the best announcement of the day is we are having our launch party immediately following service. Our app is finally here, and we are having a launch party immediately following service. And guess what? You can get your ticket for the BU conference inside the app. <laughs> so everybody take about 10 minutes to refresh yourselves. We have a table of light refreshments. We have a little photo session set up for you guys. So we would love for you guys to step out and take a few pictures. And then we're going to come back in here for a quick demo. All right, Maurice says y'all can only have five minutes. Okay, not 10. He said y'all can have five minutes. And then come back in here and we are going to have a quick demo so we can help everybody install the app and t test out all the features. Y'all excited? All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us to our online audience. And we'll see y'all back in here in five minutes.